Okay, here we go, man. We got another episode we are jumping into, and uh, yes. Richard, this is our first one for February, isn't it? It is. My it gosh, is. and we're already over it's halfway through February. It's past Valentine's Day. What'd you do for Valentine's Day? Man, we actually, uh, actually, Valentine's was Friday night, but Saturday night, Hannah and I, man, we grilled out some steaks. We actually tag-teamed dinner, and it was great. It awesome. Was, it was great. So yeah. we have this thing called date night, because we have three children, and so getting out a lot is not what we do um so we kind of set up movie time for the kids in another room and then my wife and i will do dinner cook dinner maybe order in and then we'll sit around and act like we're on a date but that just means our kids come and interrupt us like 16 times in the middle of that but that's kind of what we do that's our saturday nights but so we had we went a little bit more out it went out a little bit more good, on this one good for you had man we got some hannah ordered some killer new york strips and mm. It was great. So it was awesome. Yeah, it was. Great. I was actually on vacation. So. Yeah, I bet you were getting yeah. a little rest. A I was getting R&R. a little rest. A little R and R. So maybe in a week or two we'll talk about that. But tonight yeah. uh, or today we don't have time to we'll talk call it about vacation. it. Vacation. No, it was vacation. <laughs> uh, it was. But anyways, yeah. but yeah, it was. It was fun. But man, you know what? I'm actually interested in uh, if Matthew did anything for Valentine's Matthew, Day. Matthew, what'd you do for uh, Valentine's Day? Well, I. Uh, had uh, dinner with my wife. Did you really? And my, and my dog, my two Valentines. Okay, so you guys did something at home. What kind yeah. of dogs do you have? I have uh, one dog. Her name's Gracie. She's an Australian Shepherd border, coll- border Collie mix. Okay. Yeah. So she's the smartest and sweetest dog in the world and way, way too much energy. But okay. Awesome. We have a good time. We just ordered in Thai food and, and watched oh, a movie. That good. sounds great. Yeah. What'd you watch? Great. I can't remember now. It doesn't matter. It was matter. too long ago. It doesn't matter. It's just too much. It's too much. Uh, too much media consumption yeah. since yeah. then. Yeah. I've watched. Uh, you know, uh, was it McBillions? That uh, new documentary on HBO about the Monopoly McDonald's. Game? Oh, oh no! Have you guys what been is that? No, I haven't that? even heard. Did, of that. did you guys know that the Get Game was fixed? Like the what? first fifteen no. years. I knew it. I it never won that. All those years I played. So <laughs> we, yeah, it's called McBillions or McMillions. Yeah. You know, and it's a documentary about how. They, there was these guys that fixed the game. Really? It's incredible. Wow. wow. Awesome. Yeah, so I've been watching that on HBO. That's I think cool. that's probably what so, we watched. So what are they yeah. going to do to the people who fixed it? Do you get in trouble? Well, this it? happened uh, like in 2001, mm. the investigation. So I'm, I'm waiting to see, to see what happens. It's a fascinating series. Well, this is probably a good time. This is actually Matthew Timmons yes. from Novo Guitars. Hi, guys. Yeah. Man, welcome to, to the show. Man. Thanks for having me, dude. Awesome. This is great. We, uh, man, we love your company. We've Thank been you. watching it from a distance, and it's nice to be able to kind of get a little bit more, you know, in depth. Uh, yeah, Nashville neighbors. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, it's part of the reason why we came out here. Uh, you know, we moved the company here three years ago, is to, you know, you know, meet guys like you and your operation, and just, this just this is where it's happening. For and music. where did you guys move from? Um, so the company itself, uh, Dennis was out in, Dennis Fano, our owner and guitar designer, uh, was out in uh, Pennsylvania. That's where he had a, a oh, one-man okay. shop out in his basement oh, okay. in Pennsylvania. Really? And he wanted to expand Novo and wanted to, to grow it into you know a, a le- legitimate like guitar company where we made a decent amount of instruments. And so he called me up. We got hooked up about four years ago, and he said, do you want to run Novo? And move it to Nashville. So why did he call you? So, you know, based on, we had a couple connections. Um, I had worked uh, for Lawler Pickups yeah, in yeah, okay. uh, Vashon, Washington. I lived in Seattle for 10 years. And Dennis would call all the time and order pickups. Oh. And so we would chat on the phone. And I completely just went bananas for his guitars. Okay. Like, to me, when I first saw the JM6 and the PX6, the old uh, Fano guitars, I knew that this was the guy. Like his designs and the, all the aesthetics and the whole philosophy behind it, I was like, I think he's the best guitar designer in the world. So I, while I was living in Seattle, I sort of wished I worked for Dennis the whole time. Like so, I really wished I worked for Dennis. So I got wind of on Facebook because we became Facebook friends that he was starting Novo, but he was still in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Then I got wind through further channels that he was thinking about moving to Nashville. I sent him an email and said, I'm your guy. Oh, wow. okay. Wow. And that's how it happened. So you put that out there. Yeah. So just through channels. I mean, it was, you know, you know, we had, you have a lot of mutuals. And once I found out about it, it was actually our, our current uh, Norwegian dealer. He was talking, Dennis was talking to him about needing a general manager. Mm. Well, my dad, Greg Timmons, is also a general manager of guitar companies. He called my dad and said, would you be interested? He's like, no, but I know who will. Yeah. Matthew. 
So it was literally my, my dad told me about the job. Can we ask who your dad managed? Or? He, he uh, is currently the general manager of Zemitis Guitars. Zemitis. Zemitis Guitars. Um, okay. And he was also the artist relations director for Ernie Ball Music Man for a long time. Okay. And then also was the, the sales manager for Mesa Boogie. Oh, wow. really? So he's yeah. been in the industry for a Forever. Long time. I mean, yeah. I was going to, uh, you know, summer picnic parties with Ernie and Sterling and like Steve Lukather when I was like 13 years old. Really? Oh, so this fun. is all I've ever done. Yeah. Is this yeah. Is, I started yeah. working at Ernie Ball when I was 19. Yeah. And so this is it's sort of like weaved my way through the industry yeah. and now I'm here. We're starting to, to learn more and more that people, this is how people kind of came up in the industry, man. Their parents did something and they just kind of yeah, naturally I mean, when you're progressed. in the industry, you never leave. Your kids stay in it. I mean, it's a generational thing. You can check seems. out anytime you like, but you, you can just never can't leave. leave. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like, <laughs> I, I don't know why I ever thought I would do anything else. You exactly. Know? That's why. So, so, so Dennis was in uh, Pennsylvania. Yes. Yes. And, and did he, have, and I, I might mess this up. That's so fine. bear with me. So he had Fano guitars. So the timeline goes, Dennis, um, and we're going to talk a lot about Dennis, and I, you know, I will try my best to get him on the show yeah. one day because I think he'd be a great guest. We'll hold you to it. You know, I, that's fine. That's great. <laughs> and so he, um, you know, was making guitars under the Fano name, his last name, for for years and years and years. And in the late two thousands, he started getting you know really popular, um, you know, making guitars one at a time. And he got approached by the Premier Builders Guild. Um, if you remember that mm -hmm. outfit, yeah, they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. They mm -hmm. were they bought and they bought him out and bought out a couple other brands. I think they had Two Rock for a while, oh, yeah, Tone okay. King. Uh, they licensed Gustafsson, Saul Cole, so they owned uh, Fano outright. So Dennis was just a consultant um, and worked with them from 2010 to 2015. Okay, gotcha. so he had sold the company in 2010. Um, it was sort of uh, you know his way of saying I, I'm making guitars one at a time. How do I grow this into a yeah. legitimate guitar brand? They came to him and they approached him with a deal. So by 2015, it really wasn't working out for, for Dennis anymore. So he got, you know, was once his contract ran out, he started Novo. Yeah. And he's like, how am I going to do this differently now? And his idea to do it differently was to sort of control every aspect of the business uh, himself instead of, you know, sort of, you know, and so the first thing he did was hire me. Okay. okay. And that's, and that's. And moved to Nashville. And moved to Nashville. Yeah. So we were in Pennsylvania together for about nine months. And the goal the whole time, uh, you know, was sort of to figure out where we wanted to go, what yeah. we wanted to do. We knew Nashville was going to be the place. And then nine months later, we were here. Okay. Wow. So yeah. what'd you do when you got that phone call? From that, Dennis? Yeah, to say, hey, you're my guy. You said, uh, you, you said you're my guy, so... I said it to him. Well, we was a 10-minute conversation. I remember where I was. I was walking around the, the streets of Seattle, and I remember getting the phone call that Dennis wanted to talk, and so I slipped into the lobby of some apartment building so I could you know, get off the street and yeah. talk to him, and we talked for about 10 minutes, and every <laughs> single idea that he had that I was like, yeah, 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 that's it. Like, what do we want to do? We want to come to Nashville... Because we want to move somewhere where, A, we want to live, B, there's musicians and luthiers and just the industry is, is happening. And then, uh, you know, it was a place that we could do it. Yeah. And it was affordable to be able to do it. You know, we talk about, I, you know, I was in Seattle. There was plenty of, uh, you know, opportunity for something similar there. Austin, New York City. But Nashville was just appealing for all the different reasons why I said. And actually, neither of us had even been yet. Yeah. Neither of us had visited when we decided to do it. We really? visited for the first time when we came to get a lease for a place. We oh, came really? to look, came to scout buildings. You just knew Nashville time. was the place. I just was ready. Yeah. I've been yeah. ready for a long time for this opportunity. <laughs> okay. And so I was like, I don't really care yeah. what we're going to do. I mean, you know, I mean, for years I knew he was out in Pennsylvania and I didn't really want to do that. Because it maybe if it was, he was in uh, central Pennsylvania, it yeah. was not Philly, it was not Pittsburgh, maybe. I was a city guy. And yeah. so it's like, you know, Nashville said, oh, yeah, I could do that. I yeah. could do Nashville. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your guys' facility like? Um, we've got 6,500 square feet, um, about 2,000 of it office space in a showroom, and about 4,500, uh, you know, we've got uh, our, um, you know, equipment. Yeah. It's like one big open space where it's like a wood shop and sanding, and then we've got a separate uh, room for our spray booth. Yeah. So, you know, it's really, it's really cool because it's just, you know, just one big sort of, you know, like, you know, <laughs> row of machines yeah. and, and, and guys and, and gals. And it's, uh, it's like really overwhelming when you first open it up because yeah. it's like really, really tall ceilings and just like so much 
activity at once. It's, yeah, it's really fun. it's really exciting. So yeah. tell us about the guitars. Yeah. What's the what's the drive with the guitars? I mean, because we're in an industry yeah. that you know Fender and Gibson. That's what mm-hmm. everybody knows. Mm-hmm. That's what everybody likes. That's what everybody wants. But it seems like over the last several years, there's mm-hmm. a lot of boutique brands yeah. and a lot of unique body styles, um, especially offset bodies yes. popping up. And you guys are one of them. So tell us about that because we have a lot of people watching and listening. Yeah, they don't they don't know you guys. They don't know sure. anything about the product. So let's educate them. Let's talk yeah. to them and why they should uh, get on the website and look you guys up. Yeah. Well, I think that the first thing is we feel like we have like a very uh, distinct um, new guitar design as far as the shape goes. I think you're right, it's an offset, and that's a very sort of a hip thing right now is the offset. But one of the things that, that Dennis really did when he started it, it was it's a body shape that works with sort of any type of hardware and any type of uh, sort okay. of pickups and looks. So, you know, you can do an offset where we've got our Saris J, which is two P90s and a Mastery Bridge and Trem, which is mm-hmm. a very popular combination right now. But we can also do a Chop Telly Bridge with two humbuckers. We can do three Strat style pickups with a Strat Trem, all in the same body yeah. shape, different pick guards, and it all works. And okay. I, don't, I don't know how he did it. Like, you can look at it and you can say, like, like there's just something about the shape and how long it took him to sort of, you know, design it. But one of the ideas that we had was is like how many different, you know, how can you make the guitar sort how of how many combinations f- how can you feel play? new and different. And yeah. so that's why we have a philosophy like every single pick guard, every single finish is on the table. Like we are open to sort of like making the guitar sort of look and feel either super original, like something that no one's ever seen before, or make it look like a 335. Make it look like a... uh a 57 strat right okay. there's and we can do it all with that same body shape and mm. we did basically five years of that and we finally came out with our new body shape this year but i think that dennis's design detail i think that is really the key there is that he just went he just was able to after you know even making guitars since like you know the mid 90s crafting original shapes uh, a whole other company and mm. i think that it's just an evolution of that it's sort of like you know, with guys like, you know, certain designers, like, you know, even Leo Fender, it's like you get, you know, you look at what he did with Fender and then you try to see like the evolution with, you know, GNL, Music Man, things. It's like Dennis had that opportunity to like keep going, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. not stop yeah. to where it's like, well, that's what people want from me and I'm going to make the same guitars for 30 years. It's like mm-hmm. he's been able to keep going. And then me jumping in here um, to work with him, I've been able to sort of look at sort of the other side of things as far as you know, what the customers are looking for, how to position the guitars, uh, sort of what people want out of a, a modern guitar brand. And I think that the combination for us has been really great because I don't design guitars. I, I give them as much feedback as I can of what we want, but it's a it's a good combination that, so he can spend almost all his time worrying about that. Mm, yeah. So yeah. you mentioned the customer. Who is yes. your customer? Because again, uh, it's, a, it's a new market. Yes. Uh, well, it feels like it could be a marketing uh, experience mm-hmm. to where you're going out there and you're trying to identify the store mm-hmm. and who the customer is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because you're competing again with all these brands and everything sure. going on. So who is your customer? Well, one thing that we've noticed is that we've kind of straddled that line between, you know, a, a working musician who might have to sell two or three guitars to buy one of ours. And then we have collectors who have 50 and 20 Novos. So it's been really, uh, that's what I was talking about with with what I get a chance to do is sort of see where that can go. And I think that because the guitars are are bolt-on, maple neck, um, sort of uh, a little bit more, um, and I don't like using the term working man's that much, but it's not a flame maple top with with a glossy finish. So I think Mm -hmm. there's a lot of guys and gals out there who are looking for something. Um, that they could use as their number one and their their best guitar, and so our, you know, we're pretty across the board with you know, like I would say, you know, Instagram guitarists, people that just okay. want something that's really pretty, yeah. and they can get it, and then also people that play the guitar and feel it and go like, wow, this plays and feels better than anything else that I've ever touched, yeah. and so. I'm going to sell, you know, I've had those stories. I went in, I tried one of the guitars, I sold three guitars and bought it. And that's my, my guitar now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's, you know, it's hard, hard to pin down like one type of person, but I'm, I'm excited that we appeal to both sides of that. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Which I think yeah. is really great. You guys definitely, I mean, with the, with the price point of your guitars, I mean, you guys obviously making them here, you, you're 
from what I can gather, a lot of professional musicians are gravitating yes. towards your guitars, mm -hmm. seeing them being played. Yeah. Uh, you know, people, you know, giving shout outs to you guys on Instagram and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. obviously, obviously you're getting more professional musicians that are picking them up. And yeah. And, and we started our, 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 uh, least expensive models, 25 yeah. oh, wow. which okay. I think is a really good price for sort of, we don't make a lot of guitars, right. Um, mm -hmm. but we want to be really competitive in that region because, a lot of times guitars like that are only 5,000 because they say mm -hmm. handcrafted by Dennis Fano or let's talk about like these kind of fancy woods. And yeah. for us, it's just like, you know, we want to be able to compete with that upper echelon, you know, Fender, American Fender guitars, right? I mean, that's lower than custom shop, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but we want room to grow. Like we want room to say like, you know, we want someone to be able to save up and get a Novo. That's really important. And you can spend 4500 bucks. You can get uh, blocks and binding on the neck. You can get a, yeah. you know, fancy humbuckers. You can get a uh, uh, sparkle finish. You can get binding on the body. You can get a semi-hollow body. You can go that route if you want to. Yeah. Um, but we want to be able to cover as much of it as possible. Well, I'll tell you, the first time I saw them, I was, you know, I was kind of like, oh, man, I don't know. You know, like, because you, you're so bombarded by traditional guitars. Mm -hmm. That was my first response. But, man, I'll tell you what, man. Just looking at your guitars for a long time mm -hmm. and everything like that, um, man, they really do grow on you. But what gets me is, is mm -hmm. like that one, that ice metallic blue or ice blue metallic. Yes. Or the shoreline gold on these. Dude, they're beautiful guitars. Yeah. The finishes that you guys do and the combinations of the pickup and the pick guards and the mm -hmm. finish and the relicking. Yes. Or, you know, is great. So maybe you can kind of expound and kind of talk about why your guitars look the way they do. Yeah, well, that's kind of... Uh, Dennis would be happy if we never made the same guitar twice, which I'm not happy with because if someone <laughs> wants it, I want to make 15 of them and sell them, right? Yeah, yeah. But Dennis is like... So we try to straddle yeah. that line between... But he just likes to be excited about it. He wants to be excited, and so he's always sort of pushing to find new avenues and new, yeah. new ways to design it. So a lot of our dealers and customers say, do whatever you want. I want Dennis to, to pick everything out. Yeah. I want Dennis to come up wow. with it. We've wow. had artists do that before. I don't care what it is, just make it. And you know, we've come up with something. I mean, we made we've made two guitars for Keith Urban, and it's been the same for both of them. It's mm -hmm. like just Dennis, just you pick it out and do it. Yeah. Which is really exciting to be able to, to do that. And so that's sort of like our philosophy on that end um, is to be able to just get what gets us excited. I want to see a guitar get finished, and then walk it around the entire shop and say, did you guys see this one? Did you mm -hmm. see what we did on this thing? Yeah. And that happens cool. like at least once or twice a week where, cause some of the guys in the back, they don't, they don't get to see it finished. Right. Yeah. They worked on the guitar mm -hmm. and then it goes all the way to finishing. And then the guys that are setting them up, get to look at them. But I'm like, look Show at this, look, Show at, it look, off. look at this thing. Yeah. yeah. Like this is crazy. You know, we just did one the other day. It was a Saris uh, T90, we call it. So it was a, like a slab body um, with our offset and it was candy apple red. Um, with a, a roasted maple neck with with triple P90s, and it just had a flame maple neck, and it was just, just not, we've never made that guitar before. It was a combination we'd never done. Yeah, and and I was just walking around I'm like it just had it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to describe it. Just some guitars just have it, and I'm mm -hmm. like, this is it right here. Yeah, no, that's cool. absolutely. Yeah. Have you guys had a chance to play one yet? Man, no. I, which I, I did not bring a guitar. Like I'm not going to lie to you, I have not played one. That's yeah. why I said they've they've pretty much. We're going to have to do that when we go down. That's and right. Visit them. They've just grown on me by watching what you mm -hmm. guys have been doing. Well, well that's and, what I was going to say is that like that is half the battle, right? If we had a pretty Instagram guitar mm -hmm. and people played them and said, yeah, it's fine. We wouldn't be, I wouldn't be talking to you guys. No, 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 like, sure. We wouldn't have gotten there, but they, they play and they feel as good as they look. Yeah, and absolutely. that is as much uh, an important thing for Dennis. And it seems obvious, right? Like who's going to say, I'm going to make guitars and I don't care if they play good or sound. Yeah. Good. That's right. Like nobody's going to say that, sure, sure. but we, we feel like we've hit on something um, that really works for people that just feels right. You know what I mean? I think that the the distressing has a lot to do with it too. All right, let's talk about. I it. I knew we wanted to talk. Let's about talk. The about distressing it. has a lot to do with it. Yeah, well, I have philosophies. Okay, wow. let's talk. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. What's your philosophy? Well, because like I told you a minute ago, yeah. we may be on opposite yeah. sides of the table, which is here. great. Which is great because there's so many guitars that are not distressed. Yeah. So there's options for everybody, and we do do. We call it extra light, where it's not a distressed guitar. So tell us what tell us about it, the, the philosophy. And, so and the philosophy your... is this: is that first things first is the neck has to feel perfect. Okay, like we want the neck to feel like 
a, 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 an old home, right? Something that you've held in your hands forever. And so we have no finish on the back of the neck whatsoever. It's all worn down. There's dirt, oil in it. We want it to feel like you're playing a 62 Strat at Carter's yeah. and you're like, oh man, I wish I could buy this. Gotcha. Like that's how we want it to feel. So you're already starting from that point with the guitar that it needs to feel that way. So then if you've already got that stripped down and it looks like it, it's a little bit weird to have that part of the guitar done that way and not the rest of it feel like that too. Mm -hmm. So it's part of the, the aesthetic choice to do that. And I think what that adds to it is that when you play the guitar, you can play it like you own it from day one. There's no bonding uh, period. In. There's no breaking in period. You literally can play it the second you get it. So say somebody walks into a store and picks up a guitar, they're going to play our guitars hard. Mm -hmm. Because you can, you know, you walk in and you play another stuff. You're you're watching your belt buckle. You're taking your jacket off. You're you're kind of plinking on it. Mm -hmm. Ours, you're playing it hard, and you know if it sounds good. You know if you you like it right away. I play every guitar super hard. It's mm -hmm. so awesome to get to do that. That like I know which ones are like. You can ask me like Matthew, how was that one? And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, because I got to play it. Uh -huh. Like I didn't like I didn't have to go ding 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 and go cool. That one's fine. I play them all and I yeah. play them hard just so I can really feel them out. And I think that's an advantage to having a distressed guitar is that you can sort of bypass that period. Yeah. And not only that, but it gives you another avenue for aesthetic uh, sort of uniqueness, right? That's where I think is, yeah. the, is the huge aspect of it is, is that, well, you said it earlier, Dennis doesn't want to make two guitars. No. He wants to make individual guitars. So... You know, the world that we live in right now, whether it's amps or pedals or guitars, everybody wants to have something unique, mm -hmm. and they can do that. Yeah. Uh, they can do that with your guitars. The, the one thing that, and maybe it's just because it's, it's the, the way it is right now, is uh, I see some manufacturers that relic them, and yes. they look good. Yeah. And I see some who relic them, and they do too much. Yes. Yeah. And, and they, it's overkill. Mm -hmm. and, and for me... I, I'm getting kind of tired of seeing relic guitars. Sure, because I see some manufacturers that just overdo it. Which I think is like there is, you know, and I won't name names here. You could ask me later on, but we see stuff we don't like. You know, Dennis and I will see stuff, and we're like, I, ah, you know, I don't, I don't think that's it. Mm -hmm. Like you, we can tell, and you know, nobody's as hard on himself when it comes to this as Dennis is. I mean, he's halfway through some distressing. He's like. Like this sucks, and I, I don't know where I'm going to go with this. And then it, he finishes it, and I'm like, "Oh, that looks that looks really that, <laughs> that looks, looks great." So it's just there's always that sort of you know it's not a, a a slam dunk thing. One of the things about our distress levels is if we do a light distress, if if I do all the photos for Instagram, for instance, you, most of those you can't even tell that they're distressed. Mm -hmm. It's more just like a it's sort of like a psychological yeah. clue. Like you see it, and it's got a few dings on it, and then. You can play gotcha. it, I'm and it, and it matches right up in the neck. And that's, yeah. that's, you know, this green one. Like, like I was sitting here opening this up going, man, can you see the distress? But you can kind of see where it looks like it's a played yeah. guitar or mm -hmm. kind of around the edges, and yeah. that's kind of... That's, that's, kind of uh, that's our doing. default one. And then one of the things that's really cool about sort of the artistic aspect of it is you might see we do a lot of finish over finishes. We'll do like a black over 64 three-tone sunburst. Mm. And that allows, you know, there's another sort of artistic, um, stylistic element to that of bringing that, um, you know, color out underneath, yeah. which is super rad. And we're using really soft pine, and we also texturize the guitar. So if you can't see on some of the photos, if you look on Instagram, you can see, you can tell the texture of the wood really clearly. We sand it a certain way to where the texture like comes out so you can actually feel it you can feel okay. the ridges feel yeah. the grain you can feel the grain and then when you distress it you can distress it with the grain and it becomes really interesting patterns yeah okay. so it's just a whole nother it's just just dennis sort of you know one day this all came together just over the last couple of years like he's we're working on the guitars we're sanding them we're like oh wait we can bring out the texture. This is cool. Oh, wait, what if we distressed it with the texture? Oh, wait, what if we did a finish over finish and just distressed it with the texture? And then suddenly you, you've never made the same guitar twice. Gotcha. It's super fun. Yeah. 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 Now, so uh, t let's talk about we're talking yeah. about American stuff right now. Yes. And we can continue. I don't want to. I don't want to jump too fast. No, it's good. But let's talk about the imports because yeah. that's something that there's a little bit of buzz going on about that. Yeah. That appeals to a lot of people 
because a lot of people go, man, I'd really love to spend 2,500 bucks or whatever mm-hmm. the math is, but I can't afford it today. Yeah. But you guys have an import now we do. that we can get in their hands. And so when they can save up their money and get the the American one, absolutely, th- they'll have one of your Yeah. Product. So we have another uh, brand uh, called Revolta Guitars, uh, mm-hmm. fully designed by Dennis Fano, made over in the Mir factory in Korea. Um, and re- just recently, we've we've changed everything over to everything is coming out of our Nashville factory. Um, so we were partners with uh, Eastwood Guitars. Uh, they were kind of the muscle behind getting the guitars made. Um, we designed everything, but now what we've done is we want everything to come through our our factory. So it's all set up by our team and overseen by Dennis. So you guys Dennis. set them up here. Everything comes from Korea to here, and we distribute uh, worldwide. Wow. Jeez. Which is really, really exciting. And the cool part about what we're doing with Revolta is that they're not... Uh, import novos they are revolta by novo guitars and they're all unique designs by so they're Dennis. different absolutely and we do it on on purpose because we're like well a dennis wants to keep designing guitars the man's a shark just keeps eating and then what we can do is we can offer something that we don't do so it has fully gloss you know beautiful finishes um it's all uh, 25 inch scale uh, 24 fret guitars a little more modern than what we do with novo mm-hmm. And so that way, you know, when we're working with artists and, and, and customers, they've got a little bit of everything from us. Gotcha. And really what's been really big for us so far is we've come out with a baritone. It's been that. Yes. unbelievable so far. I mean, artists and everybody has just been like, wow, this is like a, a, a usable, like unique, just badass instrument yeah. um, that everybody can use. And, you know, we might sell a few baritone novos here and there, but we can yeah. do a lot with you know, uh, uh, a baritone yeah. Revolta. So that was kind of the idea is like, what are we not making with Novo yeah. that we can do? And we have a, a, a 32 inch, uh, you know, medium scale bass that we just introduced as well, oh, which is, interesting. is yeah. sort of working the same kind of magic, which yeah. is like, you know, we're going to do a bass with Novo this year. Um, it should be, uh, you know, more stuff coming from that soon. But, you know, we wanted to work on stuff that just, you know, we just can't do. It's all like, you know, set neck mahogany, which we don't do at Novo. So it's literally, you know, same designer, same same vibes, yeah. just a totally different experience. And the guitars start around uh, 1099. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, very cool. They, yeah. You know, they have the, it, it gives a little bit of a retro feel. Yeah. On, on some of those, you know, mm-hmm. some of them, like some of the shapes look like, oh, okay, you can kind of see that Novo shape a little bit. But yeah, then, still then offset. Dennis yeah. loves offset. Yeah. Um, he loves offset because it's really great for, you know, balance when you're sitting and playing and when you're standing. So it's a combination of both. The idea yeah. here is, you know, definitely, you know, the first thing that you care about is, is something that people oh, can play. Yeah. And it's all chambered mahogany. So it's all lighter weight. Oh, so, okay. cause that's a huge thing for us. I mean, we, every guitar would be six pounds if we could. Yeah. That's yeah. another philosophy of oh, ours yeah. as light as possible. Mm. So man, that's very cool. Yeah. That's I mean, cool. this so, is end user, uh, you know, sort of directed. That's the yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah. So the, but this is, this is new for you since you took everything over from, we've East been World, working with, we've been working with them since 2016 and it's been great. Um, we just wanted to have our hands on all yeah. aspects of it. Yeah. So I can start working in Revolta with the, um, you know, Novo marketing machine, um, we're going to put, you know, all the Revolta stuff on our Novo website. Uh, mm-hmm. we're working on a new website right now. Um, just to kind of combine everything we can ship to, to dealers, you know, both at once, you know, do containers. That's, uh, that's good. You know, little, you know, pallets of stuff. Um, so it's, we're able to sort of, you know, sort of combine all the business in one spot, you know. So on that topic, just uh, from a business standpoint, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do we have two different franchises? Do we have uh, Novo and uh, Revolta dealers or, or can you... Um, a lot of them are the same. Um, okay. Most of our, I mean, really, it's the Novo dealers. It's pretty exclusive. We've got 17 in the world right now. Mm. And I've got a queue of about a billion people. Wow. <laughs> which is a, a lot of deal. No, it's, <laughs> that they're asking me for Novos and yeah. a lot of countries that we'd really like to be in. Yeah. Um, so most of those are Revolta dealers. And then anybody can be a Revolta dealer okay, um, gotcha. on their own. So that's more yeah. of a supply. And yeah. We're not right doing now. anything right now where it's like you have to buy X number of Revoltas to be a Novo dealer. Mm-hmm. We're like, you know, I can't deliver on the amount of Novos people want. So I couldn't make any yeah. promises. So you can easily like we, you know, we, we should have enough Revoltas for everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, it's import that's the idea is that you can order as many as you want um as many as the factory can make for you um but you know so it's it's you know but all the like sales everything is Mm in-house for us it's 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 one team for Mm. both which is really nice like we were working with like i said the eastwood guys are great we've been working with them for uh, a couple years now we were just ready to sort of you know do it all 
Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Now, are you guys looking to grow the American <laughs> guitars or what? Because 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 when we're talking, it seems like I, I'm not I'm unsure if you guys are uh, say, hey, we only want to be this big or we're OK being bigger. So that's a great question. We're right. And I, I, I laughed a little bit because we're right on the cusp of having to make that decision. Yeah. I mean, we feel like the amount of notoriety and uh, the amount of sort of demand that we're getting for Novo, you know, could we, you know, borrow a bunch of money and buy three more CNCs and make 300 guitars a month and sell them all? Or do we want to make, you know, uh, you know, uh, a smaller number and, and everybody's happy. And I think the answer really is, is that can we sort of stick with what I've been talking about with what we like the guitars to be yeah. mm-hmm. and make a, a lot of them. And I don't, I don't, don't want to lose that. I don't know if we can, like, I don't yeah. know if you can, say i want to do as dennis says i don't want to do the same guitar twice and then you know you start cutting options you start cutting uh you know uh, colors pick guard choices uh somebody asks for i mean i've had to start doing that and i hate it well it sounds like it sounds again and i'm talking on the business not on the emotional side yes on the business side that you guys are in the right place because you can do it uh you can grow with the import lines focus on that and it's it's bare it's unlimited you yes. know because you can order mm-hmm. as many as korea uh, makes them and yep. in, in 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 america you can continue with what you guys are doing yeah. and keep the quality and the standards where you want yeah. and you get kind of the best of both worlds i think that's probably the most important thing and i think that's sort of what we're trying to experiment with a little bit more by pushing revolta out there is like if that's the role or that's the road we go down, which is, you know, keeping America as tight as possible and then, you know, making Revolta awesome. And so yeah. where it's a good, you know, eventually maybe making, you know, we've got some designs in the work that might be the first, you know, crossover guitar where we make it for both brands. Yeah. Same oh, cool. guitar. Yeah. Right. We're like at some point mm-hmm. might, we might be ready for yeah. that where I don't want to make a, a yeah. you know, well, something that would fit both, you know, like right now it doesn't fit to do a Novo import yeah. because what would it be? But we might design something. But yeah, I mean, I think yeah. that, you know, for. Dennis and I think that, you know, we just did NAM for the first time ever. Really? We had a booth. It was wild wow. to do it for the first time because we just would have been so back ordered, but yeah. we wanted to push Revolta out there. And I brought some of the Novos, the brand new uh, Soulless model, the single cut that we just announced. And yeah. the amount of people that came up to us and said, this is the first time I'm ever going to get to touch a Novo was staggering to me. Wow. Having 17 dealers and having so many people say they've never played one, it's like, wow. Yeah. Like, that's crazy But to you me. can see how that could be because uh, there's I'm, only 17 dealers. Yeah, and the yeah. dealers very rarely have stock. So wow. we're, we're looking okay. at it. And so it's it's an interesting position to be in. Like, where do we go from there? Do you, um, do you, not, do you not have people asking? You guys take a lot of input from the people who buy your guitars or play your guitars. Do you uh-huh. not have a lot of people that want, like, uh, just a, hey... Can you make it a perfect, just gloss finish? Occasionally, um, but very rarely do we do that. Okay. Most of the time, we take a lot of customer orders through the dealers, a yeah. lot okay. of people, because we can do anything, color and pick cards, uh, pickups, so many different things that, so we take a lot of orders, and then yeah. those are the ones, I could say, like maybe 10% of those mm-hmm. are, are, are clean guitars or well, extra lights, and I'm sitting but there people thinking... don't really want them from us. Yeah, they uh, well, just, they just don't. Yeah. I was just sitting there thinking that if there's ever w- any way, if you got into that aspect, you could maybe mm. create more of them. Well, it's actually but... kind of harder for us to do oh, okay. a well, clean they... guitar because of like then yeah. you have to sort of isolate it a little bit, and, yeah. and our benches are full of uh, you know razor blades and rocks that we hit. <laughs> so yeah. it's a little bit like you do have to like set it up, and then the whole idea of like you know. The way we do our finishes is it's it's a light, light, light nitro finish. Yeah. With buffing that happens like at the very end. Which after almost... it's distressed. So it's sort of, you know, we're not doing anything dipped in glass. We're not doing anything. That's exactly why we do all that with Revolta, because yeah. it's it's that side of things. But to your point, it's like there there has to be a way if we want to make a lot more American made novos, to fig we'd have to figure out some sort of compromise there. And I don't yeah. know necessarily if we want to or not. So Keep buying Revoltas. Yeah, when and I can maybe see... maybe we can stick to as many... The no, the number of Novos that we want to stick yeah, with. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I can see, yeah. man, the, 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 the tone that's coming out of your guitars is purely based off of the process of how you build them. Yeah. And obviously, you don't want that to change. No, either, I mean, so. I mean, you know, it's a cheesy thing to say, I think, but my, my 100%, my goal is that every single Novo we make is someone's favorite guitar of all time. Yeah. 
You know, it's like literally everyone that shows up on my rack. I mean, they finish the guitars, they put them on my rack in my office and I pick it up and I'm like, I want that to be whoever mm-hmm. ends up with it. Might yeah. not be the first person, but whoever ends up with it says, this is the best guitar ever made. Mm-hmm. Wow. So that's, that's a lofty goal. And I don't know how many we can make if yeah. that's the goal. I don't know. Well, but we seem to be doing pretty well with yeah. that so, so far. So let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, a guy that wants one of your guitars. Yes. He doesn't get to really, in theory, sit down and play it. He kind of has to go to the store and order it from you guys or order it from yeah, you Yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, it's... it's so a, how do they know if they're even going to like it? Well, I think that there's a lot of trust there. That okay. they're, the people that they um, sort of, whoever got them interested in, in, in a Novo, that they feel good about it. Whether it's, uh, you know, we've had a lot of success with a few sort of uh, really rising popular guys on YouTube. Um uh, uh, R.J. Ronquillo, who's mm-hmm. a who's a uh, Nashvilleian, and then also Rhett Schull, um, who play our guitars mm-hmm. and love them, and and I think that they have a lot of cred, and people really listen to them. And then also a lot of the the people that work at the stores own Novos themselves; they oh, like okay. buy them. Yeah. And sort of like I think people are okay with you know it's 2020 ordering things online. Oh, and I yeah. think if they get enough information about how it is, our guitars also retain their value. Um, really highly. So I think people don't feel too worried about what's going to happen if they don't bond with the guitar. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I think it's, it's, a, it's a leap of faith. I mean, even though we have dealers, you know, I have a dealer in LA, Mesa Boogie Hollywood, and people are like, cool, there's an LA dealer. And then they never have any. They sell all of them. I mean, I will post a picture on Instagram and I'll say where it's going and it'll sell before it gets there. Really? Yeah. I mean, I have Man, stuff that's cool. going to the UK, yeah. and the American guys will get a hold of it and say, don't ship it. I'm buying it. And they'll buy it from the UK shop before I ship it, because they're all unique. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'll see something pop up, and you'll be like, ooh, I want that one. So why not make more? I, I mean, yeah, I know what uh, we, we've talked about this, and, and and I understand what you're saying, but it seems like there's such a demand. That so if you add a couple employees and add maybe 10 percent production, the the hard part about that is, is, and this is what I've struggled with the most, is if can you make more? It's like if you like we have like we we run everything off of a CNC right now, right? And but we still like we don't have a plaque, right? We still do all that work by hand. To make more if we start looking at like what those numbers look like, right? If every single spot of my shop is at capacity with who, you know, and I have to, where can I increase it? Do I have to double the entire staff? Do I have to buy, you know, where is it that I can actually, okay, if I increase things here, can this team handle the extra workload, right? right. Can I make 10 more guitars a month if I hire somebody in sanding, but can we paint all those guitars? Can we set yeah. up all those guitars? You kind of have to commit if you're doing 40, 50, 60 guitars a month, you know, which is around where we're at most of the time. I don't yeah. like getting too detailed into that. But to 100, it's like, well, now I've got to do I have to buy another CNC? How much capital do I want? And then yeah. what are the actual numbers yeah. when I look at all of the costs for all the employees I got to hire, all of the um, machines I got to pay for? Yeah. At the end, how much more money is Dennis and I making? And do we want to do yeah, we want to yeah. run a company of Absolutely. that size, or do I want to, you know, like I had to do like for the first time I had to do like the the one birthday cake for four people thing, and it sounds dumb, but it's like mm, no. that's how the company's getting. We, we do it all the time. I mean, here, you so know, I know exactly what you're talking so, about. So yeah. there's there's a lot of facets where it's like, what kind of company did Dennis and I want to run? You got to look at the diminishing return and see. You yeah, see is that going to make us yeah. happy to run a company twice as big yeah. as we are? Yeah. Or does that and does that work financially and and well yeah because you, know? you, you could just mm-hmm. run a bigger company and just hire employees and all your money goes to employees yeah I mean hiring people and, and stuff and, and then my job turns into more where it's like I don't have a sales guy it's still just me right and I love doing that I love talking to the customers about what they might want oh what about that color what's your mm-hmm. tone I mean my I have a retail background I worked for Bose and Microsoft too yeah um, and so I love front facing you know customer experience um, we've got a showroom where people can come and play the guitars and hang out and get tours and talk and looks I, great by I, the way. I, I, thank you I love doing that part and I feel like that's part of it is that if Dennis and I do we want to run a, like a business or do we want to design guitars and talk shop and hang out and hang out it's like yeah. I, you know i've been in this industry a long time and I, I feel like i could be working like i said for for microsoft and making a lot more than i am now but that that yeah, that sucked yeah this is this is you. way better and yeah. i'm just, so i want the company designed around the idea of like what kind of life do we want to live 
You know what I mean? That's sounds just like as he, important as anything else. Yeah, it it's sounds important. like he thought it through. Yeah, it's important. Too much. You know, too <laughs> You're much. like, we're still thinking it Every through. Monday morning, I, Dennis, come into my office. I got a, a whole spiel of what I'm well, thinking it's, right now. It sounds like that you guys are on the right track. Like oh, yeah. doing the, the, the with the American stuff yeah. and then and increasing numbers with the import stuff. Mm-hmm. And if that's where you guys can grow... Uh, you're doing great, and you can still be very hands-on with the American stuff. And yeah. It seems like the best of both worlds. I hope so, yeah. I mean, it feels like it's five years in now, and it feels it feels like we're we're in a really good spot. Yeah, so. you mentioned it, but maybe the tell solace. us a little about the Solus. That's, that's yes. brand new this brand year. Brand new. So we just debuted it in January at the NAMM show. Um, it's our first new body design since we came out. Um, Dennis has been sitting on a single-cut idea for a long time. And originally, you know, the idea, of course, with a single cut is it's a carved top, two humbucker, set neck mm-hmm. guitar. So it is a carved top. Not this one. So Not that was one. the original okay. idea. And then as we progressed with what we did for Novo, one thing we haven't really talked about too much is that like every piece of wood we use is tempered pine. And I talked a little bit about the pine mm-hmm. when it comes to sort of the, the how it's soft and it lends itself to distressing and the technique. But we love the way it sounds. We think it sounds awesome. It's just super, super balanced and super just, you know, a musical in a way that just covers so much ground. Okay. Um, and so when we were looking at this guitar and we we're thinking we're doing a single cut and I was like, well, let's, let's try something that's just a lot simpler than what we've done. We kind of, uh, I talked a little bit about how all of our guitars, we have so many different pickup options, bridge options, so many different versions. We wanted to make something that was really, really simple and standard, right? You're picking which you know pickup and which bridge, right? You've got the F1, which is a Tele um, bridge pickup and bridge, and you've got uh, the M1, which is a wrap over and yeah. a dog ear, and that's it. It's a bolt-on guitar, 24 and three-quarter scale, um, a, a one and 11 sixteenths nut width. Um, it's just a burner. Right. Mm-hmm. The idea is like we wanted to make something super, super simple. Mm-hmm. And then soulless means, you know, single in Latin. So it's single pickup, single cut. And I love the pun that it's a soulless guitar. Yeah. Because so many people are like, oh, new guitars, you got to go vintage. Their new guitars are soulless. Yeah. I but get that's it, man. the name. I love it. I love guitars. We think that... way too hard on that stuff. Yeah. By the way. I love that's guitars cool, that do that, though. Just the one pickup. And man, even for me, sometimes I mean, you can drop the tone knob off. Just give me yeah. a vol- just do a volume knob, single pickup with a volume knob. I just yeah, and that's but that, and I mean that would be a preference of mine. But man, I love it, man. Yeah, Kinda... it was something like you know turn your brain off a little bit, just yeah. play. You yeah. know, we wanted something that was just super, super easy and fun to just you know you just pick it up and just jam. Yeah, and not really think about too mm-hmm. much. Not you're not fiddling around. You're just mm-hmm. really just digging in. And so you know that's that guitar is twenty five ninety nine, and and part of it was designed to keep a guitar around that price. Yeah, like sure. we really wanted to have something where it's like that's a a, a a really highly skilled made American made guitar for a great price and you can get any color and any pick guard you want on any it. color and any pick guard man, so that green looks pretty good though. it is it is really good so that way we can help our team make uh, a decent amount of them without having a lot of options so there gotcha. isn't any but we can still customize it because you can get whatever color you want whatever pick guard you want and then whatever the distress looks like yeah and then still first thing i get is all the text messages can i get a bigsby <laughs> can, I get a, can I get a neck pickup? And I'm like, yeah. maybe one day. Maybe one day. But we're trying to do something, you know, a little bit. Dude, know, that'd be crazy. A Bigsby, Bigsby on that would look cool. Yeah, though. Bigsby. With I can't. Bl- I, oh, we will do it eventually. I yeah. mean, you know, Dennis is already like 16 versions deep design wise. We just <laughs> wanted to, do, and, and it's great. If you don't want this guitar, you know, we'll, we're gonna make more versions with that body shape. It's just we really. I mean, that's. I have an F1 already, mm-hmm. Dennis. I got married in August. And Dennis made me one Congrats. for my, my wedding present and didn't he was a surprise. Oh, cool. He snuck it through the shop. He said it was for Keith Urban. Uh, so I wouldn't oh, question okay. it. He, yeah, okay. And I was gonna he, say, how did he do that? Well, because yeah. Keith taught him and Keith talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you know, Keith wants to talk to Dennis, which is great. He needs to be playing one of these. That looks I want cool. well, you know, I, I so he we definitely want to get him one of those one okay. day. But so I've got my F one and it's all I ever play now. Is it? It's just so addicting to have that Telly Bridge pickup. It's a little bit overwound, so you get a little bit more muscle yeah. from it. Um, but it's just that scale length and with a Telly Bridge yeah. pickup, it's just it's really, really cool. It's just Man, awesome. I've also noticed too that um, you also also have some great brands that you guys are associated with, mm-hmm. like Lindy Fraylin, Emerson mm-hmm. Custom, things like that. And yeah. actually, I've gotten to know Mitch 
at Emerson Custom. Oh yeah, Mitch is great. So uh, nice guy, but man, obviously you are trying to associate with other yes. great companies that have quality parts. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that you know one of the things that uh, really can make or break a guitar nowadays is that everybody sort of understands what they about all aspects of the guitar now. You know where it's. You know the the pickup choice, the bridge choice, the cap choice. I mean, there's there's a name for all of it, which is you know I don't know how long that's been a, a thing. You could you know I started working like I said at Lawler in 2011, and you know they were making a lot of inroads with uh, OEM builders, you know callings using all their humbuckers, and that was a thing. It's like you part of the appeal of the guitar was to say, oh we've got this, and so for all our stuff, you know we use mastery bridge and trim on the Sarah's J. We use Custom Freelands, custom Lawlers, throwback humbuckers. Mm -hmm. We use Emerson pots and caps. Um, yeah, you know it's 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 really great, and they're all really cool people. And you can and it's great because you can sort of collaborate with them and say like, hey, I'm thinking about this, or what about this, and you know because we always like to try stuff sure. and new stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's really great. Those like, gold foil pickups, man. Is that or gold top pickups? Or the gold foil ones fun? from Lawler are, man, are they just really, look great. really great. They're great. They're super, super fun. They're one okay. of my favorite. Are they pickups. an aggressive pickup? They're or really they're aggressive. Mellow? Oh, okay. They're super aggressive, super hi-fi. I mean, they're definitely one of Jason's philosophies. You know, because I got to work with Jason too, which is like I feel like I've been very lucky. The kind of people I've gotten to yeah. learn with, and working with Jason was great because he does not care at all if it sounds like the originals, right? Like he is not trying to replicate anything. So his, his, his strap pickups, tele pickups, humbuckers, and that gold foil is a good example. There's a lot of guys that say, oh, this is the correct. And he's like, well, it's the look. And he wanted the, the idea, but what does he want it to sound like? And mm -hmm. so that's why I like them because they're, they're not supposed to be like a replica of anything mm -hmm. in particular. They just have their own thing going on. It's very aggressive, very hot. So they're really great as a bridge pickup, I think. Yeah, man. And some people don't like that. You put the, the Lawler gold foil on the bridge with like a chopped telly, and it's just, just super bright and super nasty, mm -hmm. which is what we love. We love bright and nasty. And it's bright and <laughs> a little spanky. Bright yeah, and yeah. nasty. Bright, bright and nasty. nasty. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of our, our tone philosophies yeah. is bright and nasty. Yeah, cool. In a good way, right? You can use you know pedals and amps to like you know round the sure. tone off, but if it's dark... Coming out of the guitar, man, it's really hard to come back from that. Oh, sure it is. So it's you want to it to be resonant it. and bright and mm -hmm. present and loud in that, it in that way. Yeah, absolutely. There's a tone knob. Yeah. yeah. People, you could, yeah, you can use that. What tuners do you guys use? We use uh, Clusons. Clusons on every yeah, yeah, guitar? vintage Clusons, yeah. Okay. And then we also offer locking Clusons if you want a locking, okay. locking tuner. Yeah. Okay. Man. Mm. Dude, I'm sold. Yeah. Buy one. All right. I know I'm a guy. I know a guy. I know where you can hey, get them. You know how you said earlier you're going to need to sell three guitars to get one? I might have to sell four. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, there you go. Man, that's very cool. We do need to go down. You know, you mentioned earlier, do let's do a little trip. field trip. Yep. Go, you know, go down there and hang out and love sure. to see the place. It's and, fun. Well, I tell you what we do is sells them as lunch, and we can have you come out to lunch with us and hang out. Absolutely. And we'll come I'm tomorrow. always starving. So. Yeah. Yeah. Always starving. I'm always starving. Yeah. I'm always ready I have eat. the same problem. I've had breakfast and lunch already on my way oh, down. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. That's how I do. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So uh, I guess, hey, man, at this point, what do you want everybody to know? Do you want people? Ah. You, it sounds like you're already trying to fulfill dealers. Yeah. So, but you might want everybody out there that's listening to at least check you out. So, how can they do that? Yeah. Especially the import line, because yeah. I mean, we have a lot of people listening mm -hmm. that own music stores, and so they're probably really curious and interested. Yeah, so absolutely. How, how can they get in contact so for with a, you guys? You can email me, um, Matthew at NovoGuitars dot com, mm -hmm. um, for any inquiries you have. Um, we, I have a guy, uh, Wes Steed, who runs Revolta for us. Um, so you can email him at Wes at NovoGuitars dot com. He's the one that you'll be in contact with for for dealer stuff with Revolta. So we're really looking to expand Revolta as big as we can get. You know, we just got, you know, we did a shipment of about 300 guitars in January and we're looking at about 500 for J June and we're raring to go. You good, know what I mean? We've good. cleared out that, 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 uh, January shipment already. And it's like, we're really excited to kind of keep going with that. Yeah. So yeah. that's, we're ready to go. You know, we're at revoltaguitars.com right now. Um, obviously novoguitars.com. And, you know, anytime you want to keep up with what we're doing, we've got, you know, the Instagram is, is current. I mean, that's where you go now to yeah. check out anything. It's yeah, just go no. to the gram. 
go to the gram, go to the gram, yeah. the Instagram. So, yeah, dude, it's a pleasure, man. I, awesome. you know, I hope this is, you know, we always, uh, you know, Richard and I always want to try to create a community of, yeah. especially local, you know. Yeah, it was a huge part of coming to Nashville for us was yeah. was to be able to be around this kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. we want to, we yeah, just is great. So we need to catch up maybe in six, seven months, kind of have you back on or sure. however, you know, well, let's or get Dennis podcast. down here. Get Dennis, Dennis, down here. that's yeah. right. Or, or maybe do something here. on location like we talked yeah. about maybe someday. You can get or, a little bit more in depth. I can tell you sort of the business side of what we're going for, but as yeah. far as like the design stuff, it's like the man, you know, yeah, the man is, is like no other. That's fun. So, yeah, he's like, I've just come, guys, I got a great idea. It's a Novo Flying V. Yeah. yeah. And you're yeah. Like, that, that's, those seasons of sister are flying, <laughs> flying out. So I don't know if you've seen that over the weekend, yeah. but, yeah. you know, that's, those are like, that's probably not the next one we're going to be putting yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, steer, steer clear of the, uh, yeah, you know, that stuff right now. All right, man. Are you yeah. good? You or any any last words? No, I'm great. Okay. Yeah, it's been awesome. Man, thank we you, appreciate thank, you a ton. Yeah, thank you for coming out. We appreciate it. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. do this again. Yeah, we'll do it again. And uh, man, if anybody ever, like uh, Matthew just said, he's got his information or you can email us at the music retail show at gmail.com. Or just check out this episode at themusicretailshow.com. Actually, it was yep. gmail.com. Sorry at about gmail, that, the yeah. email. So, But uh, yeah. sometimes I get that mixed up. There you go. Uh, but anyways, we appreciate it. And uh, Thanks for having yeah, me. You awesome. Bet, the Music Retail Show.